Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Theories and Thoughts Podcast with your host is Anya and Fancy. How y'all doing tonight, honey? I know y'all feeling real good. Sip it on y'all juice, juice, honey. Um, happy 420 for all the smokers. Mm. <laughs> and we got a guilty verdict. Come through. Come through yeah. first. I was trying to figure out how they was going to make that work by saying that he was distracted. I was like, oh, okay, distracted. Mm. That's what y'all going to say? He, he didn't look distracted to me. It looked like he knew what the hell he was doing. Right. <laughs> so I was very pleased with that. Um, glad that a lot of people were happy about that. Um, Maxine was like, baby, it caused chaos. That I'm paraphrasing her. <laughs> yeah, you may not need to paraphrase her because they already trying to get her out of something they're trying to do. Nah, I, I feel like um, she was just tired. That's how yeah. I felt. I feel like she was tired. Like she's most of us are. And she's right. been, she's older than us. So she's seen this sort of thing several, you know, probably many times in comparison to us. Exactly. And she was just like, you know, don't give up, you know, pretty much tell this shit up. So I, uh, the judge, the funny thing is, here's the thing with, with her, with her, with her statement. Here's the thing with her statement. The, the number one thing was, what if the judge was the ass and give a mistrial? Excuse me, and gave a mistrial by saying, Oh, she said this, that, and a third. So, you know, that could be influential, this, that, whatever. So let me make her make an example out of her or uh, anything. I'm glad he didn't because the prosecutors did try it. They tried they mentioned her statement. They tried to um get it as a mistrial. Oh, okay. And that's when the judge said that her that you know said what he said about her comments. But yeah, they tried to have a mistrial. I, I feel like they knew. I feel like they knew that they didn't really have a leg to stand on. Um, I feel like I didn't watch it because as I was listening to a podcast today, I was listening to um, Carrie Washington on um, Jamel Hill. I'm catching up. Um, Carrie said that <laughs> she has to be mindful of her self-care and what she takes in and how much. She takes in, and I'm the same way. I yeah. didn't watch the trial. Yeah, I didn't watch it either. I didn't. Um, watch it. <laughs> I don't really watch anything, though, to be honest. But stuff like that, I already know that it's gonna. You know, I try to filter out a lot of stuff. Really, I don't even really do Clubhouse. Y'all know I barely do social media, so I definitely didn't watch the trial because I knew that it would just bring about some harsh feelings, I guess you say, and anger and fear that they weren't going to convict him. But I am glad that, you know, they did find him guilty. Um, I wanted to share, like, so they found him guilty of the second degree unintentional murder, which is, um, what is it, without intent while committing or attempting to commit felony third degree assault. In turn, third degree assault is defined as the intentional infliction of substantial bodily harm. They found him guilty of third degree murder, which uh, alleges Chauvin caused Floyd's death by perpetrating an act imminently, imminently dangerous to others and evincing a depraved mind without a regard for human life. And then they also found him guilty of second degree manslaughter, which charges alleged uh, Chauvin caused Floyd's death by a culpable negligence, whereby the person creates an unreasonable risk and consciously takes chances of causing death or great bodily harm. So he's facing up to 40 years for the second degree murder, 25 years for the third degree murder, and up to 10 years for the second degree manslaughter. So. Um, I would say I'm glad that he got charged, but I'm waiting for sentencing. Right. That's important too, because um, important. But at least we got the right charges this time, right? Because you know? in the Dante right, um, what she was charged with, I, I at first was like, 
Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It went with with what was going on. But then after looking at certain things, it's kind of like, how did you mistake that for, um, how you mistake your gut? For a taser. For a taser. <laughs> I've still been undecided about that. Cause actually your comment last week kind of made me rethink things. And I was like, well, maybe that is the case. Maybe we should not just be so quick to assume, but um, I don't know about that. But I will say, I think it should have been first degree murder. You know, with Ch with Chavin, or however you say his name, Chavin. Why? First degree means that he went there with an intent to kill. Well, to me, he went there with an I think if you put your foot on someone's neck, then what exactly are you expecting? Uh, maybe it's not first degree, but to me, it just seems like those charges are still a little lenient. I don't know if there's anything in between there, but to me, okay. Well, I still feel like it's a little lenient because um, it is, you know, like when you say manslaughter, oftentimes to me, I think, oh, well, they didn't mean to do it. But to me, he meant to do it, you know, like he he got second degree murder. Hmm? that's why he got second degree murder. Well, I guess. OK. OK, because okay. I don't what okay. I don't know. Hi, Samaj. I don't know them, though. Is that what you're asking me? I was telling you to say hello. Oh, hi, Samaj. <laughs> he may not be here for me. I don't know him. He only here <laughs> speaks to you. No, that's a, that's a different person. Oh. <laughs> welcome. Actually, is what we should be saying. Thank <laughs> you for coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I get what you're saying, that he intentionally... Um, put his that's why he got the second, he had not the second degree. Let's see, he got the second degree because although he didn't go there with the intent, it's kind of like to my knowledge, my working knowledge is he you go there like I'm going to your house to kill you. Okay, so that's first degree. That's so I see looking degree. back again at um, okay, so second degree unintentional murder. It's probably what I'm thinking and what you're describing, because that's mm -hmm. that's what it reads uh, without intent while committing or attempting to commit a felony. Third degree assault in turn, third degree assault is defined as the intentional infliction of substantial bodily harm. So I guess that would be bodily harm. So that makes sense. Hey, Mr. Curtis. Hey, Mr. Curtis. Right. So I right. What you just said. So um. Okay. I think that um, I again, I feel like the right he was charged with the he was charged with the right things and he found guilty on the right things. I'm waiting on sentencing. Sentencing normally comes swift. That may be tomorrow. Sentencing. So I did not watch. Um, I did not watch the verdict. Um, I did not watch. I'm sorry, my nose is. Right. I'm still dealing with allergies, sinuses. Yes. It, it's warm one minute and, and cold the next. Um, <laughs> and pollen. Yeah, I know how I get in the fall, in the spring and the fall. We didn't did this before. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> moving to something that's similar, something that happened out, um, out here in uh, um, Alito, not far from Fort Worth, which is right here, kind of still in the Metroplex. So about a week ago, some white students was on Snapchat auctioning off their black classmates, middle school kids. Oh, that's they were middle school. Middle school. I think they say middle school or ninth grade. Ninth grade is what high school here. Okay. So I, I want to say they were either ninth grade or they were they kept saying middle school, but they said ninth grade. If anybody listening, it might be me. different, Excuse you me. know. Yeah. Well, I went to middle school. I went to a middle school and they ended at eight and I went to a high school, which was nine. I don't know. Well, so you had middle school and junior high. So you're right. Junior high is usually seventh and eight. Middle school is yeah. usually seven and eight. Whatever. So <laughs> on Monday, um, a flyer was circulating stating that they were going to have a slave auction. Um, same, same ISD, um, independent school district. That's what, <laughs> that's oh, what okay. I was wondering. 
the same ISD and they had a, uh, um, there was a, um, excuse me, there were a, um, a school board meeting, ISDs, you know, school board meeting about it and everything. Mm -hmm. I just feel like the, the, the school board just to me didn't seem interested to me. I mean, and I could be wrong and I just watched it on the news. I didn't watch it on, um, you know, I didn't watch the meeting. I just watched it on the news and it just seemed like, okay, because I feel like they should have did something to the kids when they were auctioning off their classmates on Snapchat. So first they did the auction on Snapchat and then they had the flyers go around. The flyer going around saying that they were um, having a slave auction on the 24th. Wow. On the 24th. So they were persistent and they knew what the hell they were doing too. And that's what I'm saying. They're old enough and they're not children because they seem to like if it's black kids or they're grown up. But if they're right. white or they're boys, no, hell, they're grown. I don't know if they were women, girls or boys, but the only thing I'm saying is they should be treated like adults. This is a hate yeah. crime. This is a hate crime. Ain't no telling what's going to happen, you know, what they would try to do, you know? Right. And it, it's just a lot. Also, they have something going on out here. Um, I didn't mention this before. Sorry. Um, National Rape Day on the 24th of April. National Rape Day? National Rape Day. Meaning what exactly? Be careful. Are you serious? Who? Yes. I don't know where the hell these people come up with these things or whatever. Who would even think of, you know, like, and announcing that and associating yourself with it? Who would even make a post promoting today as National Rape Day? I got a message in my inbox from someone. Hey, LaQuinta. Hey, Quinta. I got a message in my inbox that was saying, um, that was saying, be careful. This man was talking about it. Then somebody posted. And I was like, what sick mind comes up with stuff like this? That's the same thing. What sick mind came up with a slave auction? What, right. what sick mind came up with? Noxing off your damn classmates, your black classmates. Where we girl, these it seems like I don't know. I'm not gonna say things are getting worse, but I don't know. It's a lot going on. I thought once we stopped mentioning that man, like we hadn't been seeing them in the news and so on, and that things would kind of change, but it seems like these people are still mad about the election or something. And they're just, or they've just gone on about like, hey, we don't even need our usual leader. We're just going to still continue on in his name or something. I don't know. I, I feel like that just made them rise up a little bit. Yeah. A little bit more. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, in other news, rest in peace, Black Rob. He did pass. Um Last week at the end of the week? Last uh, Saturday. Last Saturday, this weekend, yeah. He passed away. Um, and he, according to him, they had a GoFundMe going for him to help him out in different things. And um, if you don't remember, he had the song, Whoa. I didn't know anything else from him, but Whoa. Um, but it brings me to something that I asked you about. There was a meme that said, it showed a bunch of bad boy um, artists like um, Black Rob. Um, I do not know. Huh? I'm like, I do not know most of those people on there. You did know them. You just don't realize who they are. Loon. Loon was in, in the. Um, oh, I remember Loon. That's what I'm saying. I need a girl. Huh? What's yeah. it? I need a girl. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, we can't see it. Wow. What's it. No. So this is Loon, right? Right here. At the bottom, right, girl. Yes. And then you have um, what's his name? Oh my goodness, he went to jail. Um. That's shine, huh? Shine. Shine is on that picture. Shine, Lord, I need to look at the picture again. 
I didn't recognize anybody. That shine right there in the middle. You know he did time. Yeah, I know he did, but I can't see the image too well. It's kind of up. I'm gonna have to just go back. Wait, in the middle with the at the bottom? Yes, that's him. Girl, shut up. And that's Craig Mack on the end. I almost asked you who that was. Uh, I don't know who this bullet. Um, maybe that's Biggie. Maybe uh, that's yeah, Biggie. the car. Right. And they said, um, it says, question, why do we rock with Diddy again? Asking for the culture. Because uh, Diddy has been known. And we know about this. Diddy has been known to not, not do right by his artists. Um, that was actually something that was said. I think we even talked about it. He was talking about that at um, some music awards show that he got honored. And he was saying how we need our this, we need that. And a lot of people was like, what about these masters? What about these, the way that you didn't did these different um, artists? Artists. Uh, why is somebody calling me on video chat and I'm doing... <laughs> and I'm trying to share the post so my bad no somebody's trying to call me on video chat I'm like who's video chatting me in the middle of um in the middle of us doing um broadcast broadcast anyway anyway anywho um, well, people keep saying that but like Nobody seems to stick with it because the minute he says something, anytime Diddy says something, it's just like almost God himself has spoken, you know? Um, I didn't understand why everybody was so riled up about him saying that we need to pay uh, black creators, you know? I've been saying that, but also um, I remember there was a time, or is it one of his news channels and it's some like black creators and uh, Melissa Kimball, if I'm not mistaken, has black creatives and she spells it a little differently. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't alter the spell in the way she did. But people were just saying, like, why? Why would he start something else? He could have went to the black creatives organization, you know, and work with them because it's full of black creatives. So what a year later now you're talking about pay black creators i don't know if melissa ever got paid for anything or if i know there was a thing like on twitter at first when when it first came about and people were just saying you know um why he didn't come to you so it was kind of a thing on twitter but i don't know if it ever led to anything outside of twitter or her actually talking to him or somebody in his camp or something but that was kind of the thing for me but i mean at the end of the day, he is a trendsetter. The thing with the contracts, though, like that's been going on for years. Has he, do he even have any new artists? Like that's been going on since we were kids. Now we grown and <laughs> about his age or something. Now all of a sudden we want to discuss this 20 years later. I, I agree. Um, um, but I just know that a lot of people had just had discussion on that. He did pay, um, he paid for a portion. I'm, he need to pay for the um the funeral or a portion of the funeral for yeah. black. Um and actually when I was looking um at one of the news articles that we shared, they mentioned that um Mark Curry, who was a friend of Black Rob's, right, um, he, he said that he, huh? He used to be an artist. Oh, okay. So they said that he um they said that he did pay for the funeral, if I'm not mistaken, or a portion of the funeral, like you said. And then I also, in that statement, it was there to say he also helped with some hospital bills or something as well. So that's hey, one thing. Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Yeah, well, Mark Curry said that he talked to Diddy, and he hadn't talked to Diddy in 20 years. Oh, well, look. See, like I said, 20 years later, why are we discussing? <laughs> I'm just saying, they're going to show. It's been a while, so I yeah. don't know. Oh, um, on a lighter note, Dwayne Wade gets a um, a portion. He paid, not paid, what am I saying? He is now part owner of the Utah Jazz. Yeah, I saw that. Building wealth. I'm excited for him and his camp. Um, he He's, um, his, 
um, investment group. That's why I want it. Investment groups is where it is. So his investment group is actually the group that um, that owns the Utah Jazz. So he is a minority owner of the Utah Jazz. Yeah, congratulations to him. And it's a lot of the um, NBA stars beginning to um, purchase teams or, you know, invest in ownership within their arenas. So I think that that's really cool. I was just kind of looking to see, because I know that there's recently been a lot of people um, buying ownership into teams and I cannot remember who all they were, but um, a few, just to name a few also was LeBron James, right? And then um, I even, as I was researching, saw that Grant Hill owns a part of the Atlanta Hawks. Like I didn't know that, but I wish there was something out there that just uh, where we could see like within the past course of the past few months, who all has purchased what? Because even Angel McCautry has, um, well, no, that's a TV thing, but it's just a lot of people purchasing stuff. And then we talked about the young lady from the uh, basketball team as well. Yeah, she brought back. Um, her investment group bought the team that was that. The uh, Atlanta Dream, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And also just shout out to Atlanta because they always, you know, seem to be, we're going to make it. We're going to make it with or without y'all. We're going to do it. But let's mm -hmm. go on and bring our guests in. Or did you have something else to add to that? Nope. Okay. So. Ricky, we need your camera on, darling. Hey, Ashley. Hi. Can y'all see me? No, you still can't see me, right? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I did the okay stop cam start cam I can only see myself in the corner though no, we, don't see you. we don't see you at all oh shucks hold on so why we wait for you? um okay so I'm always looking for guests to come on to talk about different things that we don't ever talk about or have no idea of just to come on and educate us about something or what have you. These two young ladies are in a group that I'm in, La Familia, and um, they actually had a conversation about this this topic, sex and sexuality in the disability community. So I was like, um, fancy, let's get the boy. And fancy's true, okay. And then she's like, so what are we gonna talk about? I said, well, they're gonna lead the conversation because <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> just ask <laughs> I mean, because I want to talk about it. So I have, we have some thoughts and some questions. And first we want to get the terminology right, because we did have someone come on before and they were like, um, that some people don't like to be called disabled. So what's the term y'all? Okay. I, I just want to apologize that you guys can't see me. I don't know why I'm having technical difficulties, but can you hear me? Yeah. We can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm, I'm a person with a disability. I, I, I think for everyone, it's a personal choice. I think it's like black and African-American. True. Which, which do you prefer? You want to be called a woman or a female? You know, like it, it, you have those different things. So for me, just a person with a disability or just Ricky does just fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad Ricky brought that up because for me, um, I go back and forth. Um, Ashley or a woman with a disability or sometimes I, I like to call myself a disabled woman. It all depends on my day and what's going on and who I'm talking to and you know how I'm feeling that day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So we yes, got two women with disabilities. <laughs> yes, ma'am. There's two women with disabilities. Yes. Yeah. So and if you don't know the person always go with the person with a disability. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes yeah. Sense. We've, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was about to say, tell us about yourself. Tell us who you are and kind of your background, what you do in that space and everything. Okay. Ashley, you want me to go first or are you going to go yeah, first? you can go first. Okay. I am Ricky Amy. Once again, I'm so sorry. Y'all can't see me. Um, I have lipstick and everything on. <laughs> um, yeah, so I try to get out and come back in. I don't know if that would help. Um, okay, I was gonna try that, but I was like, wait, I don't know. L let me try it and come back in. Yeah, Ashley, you should try that. And Ashley, okay. yeah, Ashley, you can go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I can go first while she's fixing her technical difficulties. But um, 
My name is Ashley Bolion, and I recently graduated with my PhD in Disability Studies from the University of Illinois at Chicago. I am a Louisiana native, but my most, um, what I'm most proud of in the thing that I do is with Ricky, and we do a consulting business called Annie Bolion Consulting, and this organization came from a conversation that we had over drinks, I believe. Um, and we were talking about the misconceptions that people have about disability and the stigmas associated with disability. Because oftentimes I'll have people just stare at me or, or not know how to communicate with me. And when we were talking, we were just saying that, you know, we think that comes from lack of knowledge and not from this, like, a bad place. And so we really wanted to start a company that, you know, taught people about disability in various different aspects um, and around things that they didn't know such as sex and sexuality, but also just with plain disability etiquette. Like the first question you asked us was how to refer to a person with a disability. And that, I think those are great questions to have. And, and it's simple questions like these that people don't want to raise because they don't want to be looked at funny or they don't want the backlash that comes with that and for people to tell them oh you're being insensitive to a person with a disability but it's always in my thinking that it's better to ask than to not know and we're always mm -hmm. looking no matter what we do but aside from our company i also work at Disability Rights Louisiana, which is an advocacy agency in the state of Louisiana. Um, and I primarily over there do communication. So I do their Facebook, their Instagram, and their Twitter. And I also do work on voting rights. Um, and I was a Miss Wheelchair Louisiana 2019. So I did oh, that. Okay. Um, and those are just a few things that I've done. But at the end of the day, I'm just Ashley that likes to laugh and watch TV, trashy TV. And, uh, <laughs> and that's me. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that you said Miss Wheelchair Louisiana. I have to always make her say it because she won't. Acknowledge that she did something pretty damn cool. She, she just won't acknowledge it. It's super so cool. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, I am Ricky Ainey. I my nine to five job. I work at Families Helping Families NOLA, and we assist persons and their families with disabilities from basically birth until death. You need education help. We can help you with education. You need housing assistance. We can help you get connected with the right people. Mental health drug abuse, whatever it is, we kind of have a one-stop shop for that. And I do the information and referral. And I um, I host mm, probably about 25 workshops per fiscal year. Um, Ashley has worked alongside me for the voting rights for persons with disabilities. We, um, we make sure that we cover topics that are important to persons with disabilities and help them to understand things that are out here maybe for their benefit. We help them understand things that are out here that could possibly bring harm to them. So that, that's what we do. And I am the other half of Amy Bullion Consulting and Ashley is my boss because I, I said she was my boss. I don't like to be in charge a lot. <laughs> 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 Ashley, like do what I'm not tell you that you're my boss every day. Uh, all, I, day every day. <laughs> all day I'm like, I don't care. Just send me the email. I will answer it. I'll take care of it. But you are the boss. You tell me mm -hmm. what's gonna happen, and that's what happens. Let me tell yeah. you, she is not no sit back and be quiet type of person. No, no, no. I never said that. When it comes to the <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the business aspect of Annie Volion Consulting, 
she's the the person that's like, hey friend, well, what about this? And I just started like really getting my feet wet into it because on top of being a woman with a disability, being a black woman, being a black woman that lives in a certain part of the city um, under a certain social economic status, you know, it's it's a little scary to to start a business and to know what the right move is, what's the wrong move. Should should I should I do this particular podcast? Should I go and present at Tulane University? Like, well, what is it that I should do? What am I doing? And Ashley and I are actually helping each other with that. So, you know, I'm kind of stepping in now. But I'm before it's more. definitely, I was definitely okay. Ash, whatever you say, we doing that's where we going. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you you because you make up some points tonight. Huh? Oh, I'm thank you. Glad you because you make up some points. Thank you, guys. I like your lipstick. Well, again, I've seen y'all talk about this before, and I was like, hmm, this is a good conversation to have because a lot of times whenever we think of people with disabilities, we, a lot of times, you know, people don't think of people as human. Um, It goes the same way when people have a a different culture and a different language there and I was in a um I was in a group at my at my nine to five one time and the lady said just because I'm African and I have a different language doesn't mean I'm dumb. And I stepped back and I was like, you know what you're right. That does mm-hmm. not mean that you're dumb. It just <laughs> relate a little bit differently. Right. Um what I'm finding is once I guess here lately once a month we've been having a sex topic. So I thought that this would be really cool just to discuss. So the first thing is What's the misconception when it comes to sex? Because I'm sure people think you're not having it. Well, people think that Mm -hmm. most people with disabilities are non-sexual. And I want to clarify, while some people are actually asexual, they don't want to engage in sex, whatever, whether they're disabled or not. I'm sexual. I like sex. Sex is fun. Okay? I mean, look, get it in. I I, I need that in my life. But other people... (laughs) may not you know feel the same way but sex is fun i'm a woman i have needs that need, that have to be met and it is what it is mm-hmm. yeah and i think yes. another misconception i'm sorry i'm getting feedback for some reason i i think another misconception about sex and disability is that either we're asexual not having sex or we're all heterosexual um and so when I go to the gynecologist when I was younger, they wouldn't even ask me questions about having sex. Like I had to bring those up. And then again, either people think you're not having sex or I like women. Um, and so people don't even think about us as like being varied in my aspect because a lot of the times they don't even think about us having sex. They just look at us and think we have different bodies and, you know, minds or whatever and think that we can't have sex. Like Ricky said, sex is fun. I love sex and, you know, I have it as much as I can. (laughs) (laughs) I live it. I mean, and that's the biggest thing because it's like people, and you brought up a really good thing. Some people think that you are just heterosexual. They just assume it. You know, I think that they don't even think, you know, it's just in today's environment, especially, I think people just assume you heterosexual in a lot of cases, but if you're mm-hmm. having sex as a dis- um, as a person with a disability, I think I, I, I think I would have been accused of that. So I'm sorry for even you know even with thinking that okay, well if they're having sex, they're having sex with, with the opposite sex. When in actuality, you're just like us. It's just mm-hmm. it's no difference here. There's no difference here. So what are some things that you know? So we got it out there. You're having sex. Mm-hmm. Sex is important. So, <laughs> like, uh, you feel like, yeah, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some things that you have to look for that's a little bit more? Because I know as a woman, we automatically have to look for 
those that's trying to get over, those that's trying to take, those, I mean, I'm sure in a disability community, you have to look even more. Are you really with me? Are you trying to take from me? What type of things do you experience in that, in that room? You ready for this? Yeah. You Everything y'all experience. experience. Anything you experience on a daily basis, we get the same BS. We get the dues. And you don't know if you got to give up half your paycheck to them because that's what they expect in these days. They won't be on the sofa. You know, you, you, you don't know what you're going to get. Now, I will say for me, safety is is a bigger issue. I mean, I'm, I, I'm in a relationship now, but when I was dating, I know safety was really a, a big thing. Like if I was going on a date, I had at least five or six friends who knew where I was going. But I still think that you two women or you three women still do the same thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just maybe with a little bit more insight on it, but not by much. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. Are you safe? Do you know the person that you're with? You know, that type of stuff. So it, it's pretty much the same. And that's what Ashley and I try to convey. We are just like everyone else, but different, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But so is everyone else. Fancy has dreads. Anya, am I saying it right? I told you. Yeah. Anya, Anya has her natural beauty. <laughs> you know, they, we, we're the same, but we're different. We're all women, but we just have different looks. And yeah. to be honest about those differences, there sometimes there's a lot of planning that goes into to you know being sexual or having a date. Like I like to bring up in our talks about sex and sexuality that like a date is not like for me personally. It's not like the spontaneous things you might see on a rom com, like where like you just meet someone randomly and go home with them, and you know that's it. For me to go on a date, like I need help with basically all of my basic needs. Like I can cook some things, I can eat on my own, and do like those types of things. But to get in and out of my chair, I need help. Um, so that takes a lot of discussion, and sometimes if you don't know the person, um, that weed that weeds out a lot of people. So dating for me, to be completely honest and open in here, is really hard for me because like people just like look at your you and like assume your needs, and so they'll go for the door which is which is good in a way because i get to weed out all those other people that people just have to weed out on their own but to go on a date i'm just gonna explain to you a typical date so for me mm -hmm. what that means i need to like plan for when my attendant is not gonna be here because i do get help so I have to make sure they're gone or wherever I go to meet the person before COVID. Um, it had to be in a place where I can get to and from the place on my own because I always wanted a like, um, I always wanted a way out, but I didn't want an awkward way out. So luckily I live in a location where I can do that type of thing. And then I have to plan out who's going to do my hair and my makeup. And, you know, if I plan it out to where the person's coming in after the attendant leaves, I have to call Ricky and give her the driver's license and the address and the picture of them and everything else to make sure that I'm not going to, like, be a statistic. And so while we are the same and we go through a lot of the same things, there is a lot of extra planning and creativity that needs to go into the process. And and I'm pretty sure if I was in a relationship long enough, there could be spontaneity, but there's not a lot of spontaneity in the world. Like, it's just the way it is. Like, there's planning with everything. Just yeah. out of curiosity, um, do you crave it, like spontaneity? Spontaneity? I mean, like, is that something that you want? I'm just curious. Of course. 
Oh. Of course. I, I'm just curious because I like I'm I'm going through my own thing right now about that. And so just to hear you mention it, it just kind of made me think like, well, is that something that's of importance to you or not? But and it's I, really a treasure. It, it, it's definitely a treasure. I also have a care attendant, but my abilities and my disability is different from Ashley. So my needs are different. So I can have my care attendant come in. She'll do my hair really quickly. And she's like, oh, where are you going? I'm going on a date. She knows who I'm going with. Whatever. I have a boyfriend now, so I, I'm not going on date dates like that. But still, um, you know, so it, it's just a little bit different. But still having someone to being able to be spontaneous in your life while having a disability is stressful. Because I just told Ashley the other day I had um, at surgery two and a half weeks ago. And I was like, I have people in my house all the time. How do you do it? Because when you get attendant help, you know, someone has to be there to help you with whatever it is you need. I had somebody in my house from 7 a.m. in the morning till almost 10 30 at night. And actually, I know she doesn't mind me saying she has 24 hour care. I'm like, how in the hell do you do this? Like there's no alone time. Absolutely. Well, now, you have to carve it out. Yeah. And now I feel like we switched places since you've had your surgery. Mm -hmm. I call that a lot more alone time. Then you get nails. <laughs> yeah. If my sister would have called my name one more time, I was going to choke her. <laughs> I mean, Fancy, looks like you was about to ask, ask a question. Or say something. No. Okay. Well, this is a good conversation because, honey, not that I thought you was different. It's just, and Ricky, nothing about you, even me. Mm -hmm. um, didn't say anything. It just was like, she who she is, and she Ricky, you know, I met Ricky in person in November in Atlanta, in yeah. Atlanta. And she's like everybody else. And I love that because I think that sometimes, sometimes people, some people make you feel odd. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel weird and you don't know what to say or how to say it. And then you're just like, mm. Mm -hmm. so you're saying that about um, the questions. Mm -hmm. You say that, you know, just ask the question or what have you. Some people don't want to ask the question. So whenever it comes to that, like, do people like, is it, do they normally, are they normally kind of standoffish? Cause I know sexually I'd be like, no. And mm -hmm. I'm okay with saying, no, I don't want to have sex right now. I don't want to have sex with you. I'm not having sex with all y'all, you know, like different from all y'all like a bunch of questions. We know all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, I'm saying, you know, and then whenever you want somebody, it's kind of like, I should have said yes to him. I should have said I wanted to be with him. It's kind of weird to me. So do you find yourself in those situations? Like, I should have said, I should have dealt with that person a little bit longer because maybe it was ignorance and not opportunist. Does that make sense? My question. Wait, is it opportunist from from the the guy or in Ashley's case, the, the girl? Right. right. Um. Or is it just ignorant? Because sometimes you can be like, dang, like I'm in here, I'm like, dang, I wish I had somebody to talk to. When actuality, you know, I thought they was a stupid. They was stupid. Mm -hmm. But maybe if I would just gave them a little little more time to learn me. Because mm -hmm. like with you guys, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's all about learning me, learning my needs, learning the things to help me get through with my day to day. Sometimes mm -hmm. it, it could come off as an opportunist when actuality is just ignorance. So do you ever experience something like that? I've experienced ignorance from strangers, but I'm not going to let anybody close enough in, in, in my space to be able to uh, allow for that, if, if that makes sense, because I, I'm, I'm going to peep it probably a mile away anyway. So for me, it's it's not going to be brought to my front door. I'm not going to let anybody in like that. And it's because I've always had the, the self-preservation mindset. You know, mom always said, you know, you're a pretty girl. You have a good shape. You got to be careful around these guys. You know, you, you know, all of most of our moms talk to us about possibly being raped or whatever, you know, so just to be cautious. So I'm super cautious about who I bring into my space anyway. Yeah, for me, it's hard not to so once you're in medical, you're in. But to get there, there has been plenty of times where I, I just go the other way. Um, but then, like I said, once, once you're in, like, I, I've been in situations where I've stayed for way too long. 
Um, and then still, it all depends on the situation. And the person, I guess, to see if they're quote unquote worth it or not. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's what you like, because I know that's yeah. how I'm mm -hmm. like, so, know. Right. Did I, mm -hmm. did, I, did I have to cut that off too early, too early? Go ahead, Fancy. Well, I guess um, my question kind of, and you, you all, I'm thinking it's safe to say not everyone um, who may have a disability, though, is, is actually... And I don't, and I hope, however I say this, it, 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 it isn't taken the wrong way. But not everyone mm -hmm. is actually able to have sex. True. Is that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, but actually, I'm saying, but a lot are. It's, I mean, would yes. you say it's safe to mm -hmm. say? Yes, very much so. Um, I know we, Ashley and I, we, um, we've hosted a few meetings for this group. I don't want to say their name because an incident happened, but it, it's a group specifically for persons with disabilities. And there is this woman, she's in her forties and she had a boyfriend, he was in his thirties and her mom had to be in her sixties, maybe he's known to 70. And we had told her mom several times, pulled it to the side, mom, such and such is really seeming to be ready for the next step with her boyfriend. Oh, no, she's not. No, she's not. And she would do everything she could to protect her from being sexually active. Well, at one of the meetings, one of the parents comes out of the unisex bathroom screaming because the person that we were talking about was on her knees giving a BJ to her boyfriend. And her mom was mortified. Absolutely mortified. We'd given her several ideas options of how to make this safe for her, so on and so forth. Now, granted, she does have an intellectual disability, but she still knows what sex is, and she still knows that she wants her body to feel good, and she wants other people to feel good. So it turned into a thing, you know, because her mom would not let her have sex. Wow. She stays with her mom. I love how you do peaches, Ricky. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> the way you just said that, how you're just like, we told her mom. Like, we did. Like, and y'all teach. I love mm -hmm. you. Y'all, like, we, we have to. We have to. And just like we have to learn about Black matters and women's rights and so on. So we have to know about disability. It, it's, a, it's a big part. Disability is a huge part of our lives. So whether any of us know it or not, um, you can get hit by a car tomorrow. You know, you, yeah, you, yeah. you can have a family member come down sick with cancer or anything like that. The disability has touched all of us. It's just about the way that we look at it, you know? And I want to go on back to something fancy you brought up, actually. Um, sex doesn't always mean what we think of as penetrative sex or anything like that. People with disabilities that can't have your you know, conventional forms of sex can actually do different things, whether that be pleasuring their partner or watching their partner get pleasure to themselves or any number of things. So the amazing thing about disability and sexuality, at least to me, is it give, gets us to think about sex and sexuality out of the box. Right? It gets us to think about different ways we can do things, but also different ways to make our bodies our own and to make ourselves feel desired and wanted. Like uh, a lot of us sexuality, um, and we talk about this a lot. Um, actually, it was a conversation the other day. Um, a lot. I am really particular about my hair. I love getting my hair done, my makeup done, you know, my earrings in and things like that. And it's the way I like to present myself. And without that, I don't feel like I always say I don't feel like a person. Like if my hair is not done, I don't feel like a person. I'm not a person in the view that day. Because I don't feel pretty. I don't feel like my inner self is represented. And not that your outward appearance should matter that much. But to me, it's the 
my outside is a way that I reflect my inside. And mm -hmm. so, and it's the way I reflect my personality. Mm -hmm. So if I look a mess, then I must be feeling a mess, right? Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, on a Sunday or a Saturday, like, I don't like to get out of my pajamas, and that is fine, but that's due to my own accord. Right. Mm -hmm. But also, we have to think about sex and sexuality is more than the act. It's like what we do for ourselves. Leading to the act, it could be us pleasuring ourselves. Like, it can be a whole gamut of things. And so, yeah, so I think that's the beauty of it all. You just said a whole lot, Ashley, because I mean, even again, it goes back to we're all the same. Mm -hmm. It goes back to mm -hmm. oh, we all the same because we can also find pleasure in watching our partner or pleasing ourselves. Or I'm the same way. If my hair is not before this comes on, me and Fess, you're like, look, and am I looking okay? Is this how's my makeup looking? I, you know, I want to look good and. When I don't look good, like even when I'm sick, I try my best to put on makeup and mm -hmm. make myself look like something because I'm like, okay, I feel better. So I 100% agree with you, girl. Uh, look at that because I'm the same way. Like, uh, um, okay, I'm looking a mess, I'm feeling a mess, or what have you, or even, you know, my, you know, not necessarily. <laughs> the act of. So thank you for bringing that up because we didn't touch on that and I didn't even think about that. And in Ricky had to make me realize the other day that that was a need of mine because all the time I think of like my outward appearances, me being vain, me wanting to look a certain way and you know, not all the time mm -hmm. can a person look a certain way. So my attendants don't need to know these things and it's up to me to YouTube everything and figure it out. And Ricky had to like, we had to have a conversation about that the other day. And she was like, no, it's how you present yourself and like what makes you feel good about yourself. And it's, it's true. Like it's your own swag. Like well, we, we all your... have well, what it is. Like I'm not leaving out the door without perfume on. I'm freshly showered in perfume. I'm, I'm choking people when I'm passing by because I need to be on myself. <laughs> Okay. And, and I, I know, you know, and I, I don't care about your allergies. You'll be okay because I'm just gonna be here for a uh, second, you know. But I need to do my perfume, so I get no, it. It's, it's your own swag. That remind me of what my grandpa used to say. He used to say, "You gotta leave the house smelling like French whore." That's what my grandpa <laughs> said. That's right. French uh, whore. Yes, yeah. I learned a lot. Well, I what I've learned tonight is. It's no different. <laughs> like like you say, it's no different. It's just, it may take a little while, you know, take a little bit more work. Well, that's with anybody. That's with me too. Like you have to know what, what I like and what exactly. what you go. Exactly. It mentally, my stuff is mentally, honey. I don't have a physical disability. I have mental stuff. Mm -hmm. um, girl, I got a combination, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. Um, as far as with Ashley just saying that about the preparation and so on, I, I um, which I suffer from bipolar disorder, but for me, mm -hmm. um, I have to prepare things like way ahead of time as well. So I really understood where you were coming from with that because I know how I can be and just the little, the least little thing mm -hmm. can possibly offset my mood, you know. So I get what you're saying. Yeah, I, me too. I totally understand that. yeah, I totally, totally get that. I, um, I usually don't. Well, I, I do say it. I, I I deal with anxiety and depression as well, and I think that's something that just come almost comes hand in hand with having a disability. Because some days you're gonna have really really great days, mm -hmm. and some days you're gonna have really really crappy days. Yeah. yeah. But I I get what you're saying, Fancy. I, I can do. I I can have a, a whole day plan. Something goes wrong. I'm bursting out in tears, and it's almost over. You know. So. <laughs> I yeah. Can, uh, with PCOS, I have moved, my moods go up and down sometimes, and I'm not in control, but mm -hmm. I deal with anxiety and depression also mm -hmm. with whole PCOS. So I'm with that. I'm with y'all. I like to plan stuff, but I like to be spontaneous at the same time because mm -hmm. it's just, okay, well, let's do this because it's going to get me out this mood or let me go try this or, you know, let me try this with my hair today or with my makeup mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. So I was in the oh, go ahead. 
Well, I wanted to know, do you all use dating apps? Just girl, girl. 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 trash. <laughs> okay, Ricky, like, Ricky, like she got some stories. We're bringing y'all back to talk about just that. Listen, <laughs> I don't have I don't have enough time in a three hundred and sixty five day year to tell you the horror stories of a day nap, but I have tried. But I, have. I have tried. You like them? What you like dating apps? Oh no! Oh, oh, oh I can't <laughs> hear what you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can hear what you were saying over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just say, oh no. Okay. Oh, okay. So do you like a, a dating app? There, um, I'm still trying, trying different ones. I realize well, the better quality alive. of the app is better, the better the person, you know, yeah. the better the direction. So I've been on Bumble, and you all know that Bumble is um female owned. So that's oh, one I reason. Know that. I didn't know yeah. that either. I need to try. Yeah, that. so you can initiate uh, the women. Look at Anya. She already shaking her head like, uh, uh. But nope. I did a blog, child. Y'all didn't read it. Look, Ricky, I think you was on my page. No, you wasn't on my page then. Listen, I didn't did them all. I, I talked about it. Before. I ain't going back. <laughs> Girl, listen, I ended, listen, I ended up stalking my now boyfriend for six years at the grocery store, and he and I are together, and then we're going to make that work. That's just what it is. <laughs> six years? Six years? I would be in, in the meat department like this. He over there? Oh, look how cute he is. Like, I was really doing that, that, that whole thing, but I tried to speak to him, like tell him I liked him or whatever, but inside I was nervous that he wouldn't like me because I had a disability. I was like, he's not gonna like me. He's not gonna like me. I've had guys pass by me. She fine, but I I, I can't have sex with her because she don't have arms. Excuse me, I I I, I do have arms. What do, you, or what do you mean? Maybe because my arms don't bend, I all of a sudden don't have arms. What the heck? So I was super super nervous. But child, six years down the line, he finally took my number. We've been together for four. <laughs> so yeah. Your dating life going better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was forced on me. I, I had a coworker drive me to the store where he works. She was like, "You gonna tell him today?" I was like, okay. "So yeah, oh it, it was forced God. upon." I, I wasn't bold like that, fancy. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 Ricky, I, I've been in conversations with you, and I yes, know. You see, that's kind of like I am. If it's somebody I, I'm interested in, I might not say nothing either. I might just step back and be like, well, he might not like, because my thing is, he might not like a chubby chick. Mm -hmm. I'm curious who I am, but it's mm -hmm. like, is he on, do he like chubby, chubby? Do he like women with natural hair? Right, right, right. I've met men who, who are like, I prefer a woman with a wig. So yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it is a lot. It, it it definitely is a lot. I definitely enjoyed talking with y'all today. I was nervous all day. I didn't know what it was gonna be like. <laughs> I was messaging Anya at eight something this morning. Anya, what are the questions? What are we gonna do? Listen, Fancy was asking me what we gonna talk about. I said we gonna talk to them. They gonna he talk didn't to tell them. you either, Fancy. See what I'm saying? No, I I, I was just kind of you know you have been so cool to talk to, but I, I was just. So worried, like I didn't want to say anything to offend, but I did have questions. You are my main question that I asked was what I had been really curious about, and actually, you know, you all answered that, and actually, really opened my eyes, you know, to just I when I think of sex, I guess you know, you just think, of course, um, you think penetration, you think like like Anya also said, you think everybody is heterosexual, so you all have brought so much, you know, just knowledge, like awareness, and I opening you know, stuff to us. Yeah. Well, thank we you. We're going to back on because we're going to talk about just the disability community. We're we going to talk about that. I, mm -hmm. I, I really want to talk about that even more. Okay. Um, I wasn't nervous. I, I knew that you had a kind First of all, I've met you, Ricky, and I've met you in person, and I know mm -hmm. this kind of woman that you are. Ashley, I've known you for what, probably, what, five months now? Four yeah, five. probably five or six months. Yeah. So, you know, I, I talked to y'all in a group. So I knew, if nothing else, Ricky was going to bring great conversation. <laughs> you know, I didn't know much about you. You know, I hadn't really had a conversation with you, actually. But I knew Ricky. Mm -hmm. She was, look. And then Joe, Joe was like, oh, Lord, you're going to have Ricky on there? You know she's going to. I said, listen, <laughs> Joe is another person in the group. And I was like, listen, yes. And we're going to talk about this. Because, again, um. Like you said, Ricky, being a black woman with, with a disability, you know, 
And it just brings, you know, we don't talk about this. We no, don't talk about not at all. We the don't talk about the child to have sex. Right. But she was ready to go for it. Right. And her mm-hmm. mom fought us tooth and nail, you know? And we're like, but look what happened. And, and it could have been with anybody. She could have gotten raped. She could have, I mean, anything could have happened to her. It finally opened her mom's eyes, you know, because it, it scared the crap out of all of us, you know? Right. So, yeah, but I, I enjoyed my time with you ladies. I, I really yeah, did. Yeah. I did. Thank and you. I think the number one thing is to not be afraid to ask questions, like not to be nervous around people with disabilities because Sometimes I'll be honest, people with disabilities can be dicks. But they that's, can. That's like, they can. Else. that's like everybody else, right? You might come across another person and they might be having a bad day and curse you out by asking the simplest question like, Well, can you open the door? Like, but that's the same with people with disabilities. So never be afraid to ask what you want. Or talk about what you want because all they could be like is, you know, don't refer to me in that way or, you know, or correct you. But that's all that could happen. And you ladies were on point. Everything was great. Mm -hmm. You all knew the questions to ask and it was natural and it was sincere. And I appreciate that because we get so many people who talk at us and they don't talk to us or with us. Mm -hmm. They they, they don't have a conversation. They're just like, It's, it's like. Charlie Brown's teacher on the phone, you know. So <laughs> I, I, I mean, you ladies, thank you so much for, for, for doing this in a very respectful way. But I, I knew it was going to be respectful. I didn't have any doubts about that. But I just want to commend you both on that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Is there anything that we did not cover that you want to make sure we get out there? Um, and also tell us how to contact you. Oh, it's at the bottom. Look how fancy y'all are. Y'all have all our stuff on there. Okay. Y'all on top of it, ladies. Okay, so it is Instagram, Annie. Annie Volion Consulting Company. Well, consulting.com. And Facebook is www.facebook.com slash Annie Volion Consulting. All right. Yes, ma'am. You know someone with a disability, they have questions. Um, What type of consulting real quick? Business consulting, it can be anywhere from doctors to schools. Um, we do a lot of work with Tulane University. Right now, we have focus groups going on all this week. And any any professional realm, we can do consulting. And so just to tell you a little bit about the topics we do. So we've done disability etiquette. So um, basically, that's about language and um, different ways to communicate with people with disabilities. Um, we also have done sexuality and disability, as Anya knows. Um, and then we've done some stuff on access and disability. So if there's any topic that, that you or your organization doesn't know enough about, um, you can feel free to contact either one of us um our website has a contact us link on it that if you fill it out it goes directly to our email addresses Mm -hmm. and i can also um give you my email address as well as ricky's um i don't know if they can see what's in the the chat box but um my email address is actually not really on um at annievolionconsulting.com but the easiest way to do it is just to go to the contact us link on our website and yeah i have i have first world problems i we we actually i have two businesses and i can't remember my any bullion consulting email address <laughs> <laughs> Your, yours okay i know her any bullion email address her any bullion email address is Ricky dot at com. So it's just your first and last name, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Oh, to that. <laughs> friend, I'm gonna get you a margarita for Cinco de Mayo. I got you, friend. <laughs> oh no, that's right around the corner. That's next week. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much.
I can't wait to have y'all back on. All yeah, right. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Y'all have a good night. All right. Good night. night. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. That was really Wait. good. Really good. I learned a lot. Um, I think, like she said, ask the questions because you won't be ignorant. True. You, know, you won't say the the wrong things. You won't. Um, you won't feel weird. You know. You you won't feel weird and out of sorts. So I enjoyed it. I I'm really excited about. It. We're gonna have to get them on about etiquette. We can talk about etiquette or something. Yeah, I see Lisa said, um, I enjoyed you ladies on the show. I was meaning to share that while they were still on, but apparently, um, and I've been seeing a lot of love, like hearts and so on, um, yeah. on my phone too. So I think this was a really interesting conversation that needed to be had. I hope yeah. that, um, those, uh, you know, their viewers are feel like they were educated or informed as well, because that was very, I'm just still kind of drilling from it because it was just, you know, it was so enlightening. And I was worried about how things were gonna go, so I'm just like, everything went well. Um, one thing, I, um, at oh, least you can say hello. Oh, hey, hey. And one thing I want to make certain that I do tonight is drop our um text chat, our our TAT tribe link in the comments because I have been forgetting that. But you all can join our text group. We're trying to get it popping in there. Um, we right now don't have a lot of people, so it would be really nice to get some <laughs> to get some people in there. Um, we have some other plans. So, but let me know though in the comments. Okay, I was trying to make certain that they actually show since we're also streaming on YouTube again tonight, and I see that it looks like it showed on both sides, so that's really good. So you all join us, and you know we're gonna talk about girlfriend stuff, you know, just be yeah. friends. You can send your picture in there. My whole, my whole thing is I've been well taking opinions for stuff. So I'm looking forward to it so I can be like, look, y'all can tell me if this looks good or not, or don't wear this, or you like my hair like that, or, and I'm always asking Anya about my makeup. So that's one thing right always. there. <laughs> always. Fancy is learning makeup. So y'all can get in there and help her and teach her makeup. Yeah, please. Uh -huh. Help, help uh -huh. sister out. Um, so coming up, I will be um a keynote speaker for the a Queen's Round Table Quarterly Symposium. I'm really excited about this. I think it's gonna be May 8th, if I'm not mistaken, with Miss Jacqueline Cabby um Harrison. Swagger is a sponsor. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'll be talking about Baby, just because you gotta take your 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 cape off, don't mean that you're not magical, boo. We gonna talk about that. We are gonna talk about um still working, walking, you know, staying focused, and everything in the middle of these storms. I got so much I want to talk about. We are gonna talk a little bit about confidence. So we only got I don't know how long we have, but I ain't gonna keep y'all long. <laughs> about to get into it, and I'm gonna tell y'all what I got to tell y'all because being a woman is hard. It's it hard, is. and. You know, there's this phase. You can't compete where you don't compare. I ain't comparing myself to nobody. I'm in my own lane. So you don't compare over here, boo. I don't have to try to outplay you. I'll do nothing because I'm my own team. I'm my own thing right here. I mean, you know, you get it. I'm in my okay, own. Lane. Huh? <laughs> I'm like, you're having a moment here? Yes, I'm having a moment. <laughs> okay, okay so money bag, yo. I know, right? Girl, I love money <laughs> where you go now. Don't, don't, don't do that. Y'all know I have my ratchet side. So I have my LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is um, Lady CEO, Lady with an I, CEO. I am um, Lady CEO on all platforms. If you would like to um, book us, book me or book Fancy, a book for the show, you can always email us. And I didn't tell you that another time. Oh, there it is. There is a thoughts at LadyCEO.com. We're always looking for topics. We're always looking for um, booking opportunities, excuse me, booking opportunities and um, and all of that. So contact us right there. Right. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But um, so, and of course my uh, link tree is Fancy Thoughts. That's with an S on Fancy. So Fancy Thoughts. And of course you can find Swagger Magazine everywhere. And for all my personal accounts, everything is Fancy Swagger. 
So I think that's it. Next, next week, we're going to What? Yeah. No, I was about to say that. You're right. I'm going to say it. I was just thinking because I was like, what do we have next week? But yes, next week is wind down. So grab your wine, join us. And yeah. Join us, um, and we will be talking about the topics. Um, we'll be going down through the topics that we talked about this month, as well as current events. Find out about our um about what's going on. Also, we will be posting our landing page for the talk show because we have the commercial out. The commercial is complete. I'm really excited about that. And once you see the landing page, go to the landing page and you'll see the commercial coming soon on the Exposure Network app i'm so hype about that i can't wait for y'all to see what we have in store baby it's up from here all right right and y'all can go ahead on and download the exposure app i'm leaving it in the comments but thanks y'all and bye bye